Welcome to another video. We have a system of equations here and we're going to solve it using matrices. Now, one advantage of using matrices in solving any system of equations is that it is more efficient, it is faster, and you write less. Because all you're writing are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There are no x's showing up in what you're doing. Now, what does inconsistent system mean? It means that you're lying. Because yesterday you told me x equals 1 and today you're saying x equals 2. x cannot be 1 and at the same time be equal to 2. So that's what inconsistency means and any system of equations that features that has no solution. So this system we have here has no solution. And I want to show you how to detect it. So this is the meaning of inconsistency. It means you have things like 1 is equal to 2. Whenever this shows up in any calculation you're doing, there is no solution. It's either you've made a mistake or the system itself is a mistake or the problem you're solving is a mistake. See, something in, the it's called the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. This fundamental theorem of arithmetic says that x plus 1 can never be equal to x plus 2. If you're new to solving algebra questions and somebody writes this and says find x, if you're, if you're not aware of it, you, you try to solve this, this cannot be solved because x plus 1 is not equal to x plus 2. There's so much inconsistency because if you subtract x from both sides to end up with 1 equals 2 and this is false so the equation in itself is false so sometimes this is easy to see sometimes a system of equations is set up in such a way that it cannot be solved because there's a lie embedded in it but you can see because there's so many things written down so let's use matrices to decipher this and figure out why it is inconsistent so from the previous videos that I have made, I showed that you can write this as 2, 1, 2. You write this as 1, 1, 3. The coefficients rather, 3, 2, 5. If you write this as a matrix and you multiply this by the x1, x2, x3, your answer is going to be on the right hand side, 0, 1, 3. So, this system of equations can actually be written this way. And you remember that this is a 3 by 3 matrix and it can multiply a 3 by 1 matrix because the inside dimensions are the same. So, if you multiply this by this, you're going to get this. That's exactly what you're going to get. And the right-hand side stays the way it is, 0, 1, 3. Now, how do we use matrices to solve a system of equations? Now, if I, if I can get rid of this guy, if I can get rid of this, what I'm going to have is just this equals this. But this is going to change. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for something to multiply this and use that same thing to multiply this. So when I use the inverse, so if I can get the inverse of this and multiply it, then I can multiply this also by its inverse. So this is the equation. What you have here is basically a matrix multiplied by another matrix of x, giving us another matrix here. This is the solution. If I can multiply this by its inverse, But whatever you do to the left-hand side, you must do to the right-hand side. This will become the identity matrix. And this is the inverse of A times B, which means that, remember, if you multiply the identity matrix by any matrix, what you're going to get is just that matrix. And this is A inverse times B. So this is the principle behind using a system using matrices for solving a system of equations, especially when we do Gaussian elimination, uh, row echelon form or reduced row echelon form, which is what I'm going to talk about today. This is possible if there is an inverse. Okay? If there is no inverse, 
to get rid of this a, it's impossible to get this x. So the first assumption when you see a system of equations and you make it into a matrix is that this matrix you have can be inverted. It has an, an inverse, okay? But we'll find out later that it doesn't have an inverse, although that's not the mission. So we're gonna do reduced row echelon. So how do you solve this? What you do is, because we don't wanna keep writing this, you just have, you wanna keep this along with this and start doing your reduced row echelon or row echelon form a simplification. So I have written this, this and this, I put them together so that whatever I do to this, I can do to this and everything keeps going. Okay, let's forget about the, the X column. Okay, the column matrix we have here, just leave it. Now let's see. Remember that the mission of the reduced row echelon form is, or the row echelon form, it depends on what your teacher wants you to do, um, is to make as many zeros here and here. So you want to make this a zero, make this a zero, make this a zero. So what's left is just this one. So, but it's not easy to make a zero. I think I would rather move this to the first so I want to switch these two so that what I have here is one it's always smart to do that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this and say I'm switching row one and row two so if I switch these two rows I'm going to have okay so now I can make as many zeros here and how do I do it if I want to make a zero here I'm going to add minus two of this to this, and I'm gonna add minus three of this to this. That's our first mission. So I'm gonna say the new row two is minus two of row one plus row two, and the new row three is minus three of row one plus row three. That's what I get. Well, let's see what it looks like. Uh, should I write it here? Okay, let's write it here. So, since I'm not changing row one, I have one, one, three, one, I'm changing row two, it's going to be minus two of this plus this, so it's minus two plus two, that gives me zero. Minus two plus one gives me minus one, and minus six plus two gives me minus four. And minus two, of, minus two plus zero gives me minus two. If I go down here, it's gonna be minus three plus this gives me zero. Minus three plus this gives me minus one, and minus three, that's minus nine, plus five gives me minus four. And minus three of this plus this gives me zero. Okay, we're almost done because the inconsistency has suddenly appeared. I can already see it that this row here is exactly this row, but what's on the right hand side is not the same. But let's just move on one more step. Now, I wanna do this. I wanna make a zero here. To make a zero here, I can subtract this from this because they're exactly the same. So I can say that my new row three is equal to um, minus row two plus row three. Okay, that's all I'm doing. So let's see. This is gonna be one, one, three. And I have this to be one. Then I have zero minus one minus four I have minus two. Now the, fi the final one, the negative of this plus this is gonna give me zero, okay? The negative of this plus this is gonna give me zero, and the negative of this plus this is gonna give me two. Have you seen the inconsistency already? Zero can never be equal to two. A combination of these two can be equal to minus two, but this is a problem. You're saying nothing is equal to two. That's not true. So this is inconsistent, okay? This is inconsistent. So you don't have to keep going until you eliminate everything else because if you keep going, you can still eliminate this, okay? But that's, once you see this, there's no point wasting your time trying to solve the system of equations. It is inconsistent. And let me show you, so here you can clearly say no solution. So that's one way. A second way to show you that it is inconsistent is that the matrix that you formed from the, co the coefficients does not have an inverse because the determinant of this matrix is zero. 
Anytime you have an inconsistent um, situation, you know that the matrix has a determinant that is zero. And if the determinant is zero, um, it means you cannot invert it. Okay, if you remember the universal formula for determinant. Okay, so you cannot, you cannot, in, you can invert it. And let's quickly sh show that. Look at this. Let's say we write two, one, three. We have one, one, two. We're going to use um, the rule of Sarus. And um, that's going to be two, three, five. Okay, we're going to copy the first two, put them here. Two, one, three and one, one, two. Okay, if we multiply this way, this is gonna be 10. If we multiply this way, this is gonna be nine, we add. If we multiply this way, this is gonna be four. Okay, that's equal to 23. If we multiply this way, that's gonna be six. If we multiply this way, that's gonna be 12. If we multiply this way, that's gonna be five. If you add these two together, it's gonna to be equal to 23, because that's gonna be 18 plus five, 23. And you're supposed to subtract this from this. So, determinant equals 23 minus 23, which is equal to zero. So it means it is not invertible. And therefore, whatever system of equations it is representing has no solution. Never stop learning. Those who stopped learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.